thumbnail. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing my long-awaited, long-requested review of the Bad Habit palettes that I have from the Shop Hush app. Now, I currently own five. I used to have seven, but I decluttered two of them. Before I jump into the video, I'm going to go ahead and explain to those that don't really know what Bad Habit is. Their brand you can mainly find on the Shop Hush app, and what they do are create dupes of really popular palettes. I know this can be a controversial topic for some, but personally, I like dupes. I like dupe companies, I like dupe palettes. I think, I honestly think it's fairly inevitable, especially in a community like the beauty community, but you do see this across, you know, other aspects of the economy. Like if you go to the grocery store, you'll see like your name brand mac and cheese right here, and then you'll see like the store brand right here, and it's not called mac and cheese, but it's called like the mac pasta and, and cheese, you know? That happens all across the grocery store. They have their own brand. Whole Foods has their own brand. It's called Whole 365 or something. And they do the same thing. They have just like generic versions. You see this in prescriptions. You see this in drugs and pharmaceuticals. You see this everywhere. So I honestly, I think it's a great way for people that legitimately can't afford these higher end palettes, especially like Natasha Denona palette. These are expensive. And I think that finding alternatives for these palettes should be a priority for those people that either can or don't want to spend the money on the expensive palette. So personally, I'm fine with dupes. I really enjoy them. I love finding dupes. I think a lot of people get uncomfortable when they're like exact dupes that you can tell, but I still think, you know, it's fair game. And it's the number one complaint I hear people say is, oh, there's, they're stealing ideas and they're stealing customers from other people. Odds are, if you're in the market and you're buying, like, the $12 app from Shop Hush, you're not really buying the other palette unless you're specifically doing a review to help other people out. So I really think that they're catering to two different segments of the market. It's not like a Venn diagram except for the few people that are reviewing to let you know which one you should really get. Okay, enough explaining out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump into the eyeshadow. The first two palettes I'm gonna go over are two that I've actually already decluttered. So Bad Habit has two palettes. They're called the Solstice and the... There's one more, I forgot the name. I'll throw pictures up here. I took my own pictures of the palettes because I did have them both, but they're both palettes for the Natasha Denona Lila palette and the Natasha Denona Sunset palette. Now, since I went ahead and invested in the Natasha Denona palettes and I knew I wasn't going to declutter these anytime soon, while going through my collection, I went ahead and I decluttered the Bad Habit versions. That doesn't mean that they're not great palettes. It just means that I had to make the decision personally to invest in the Natasha Denona versions and didn't feel the need to have an exact duplicate of the palette in my collection. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in all of my pictures, swatches, and videos of these two palettes side by side. So as you can see from the swatches, the Bad Habit palettes are fairly spot on when it comes to these colors. I would only recommend one of the palettes though, and that one is the dupe of the Lila palette. Bad Habit really shines in its shimmers. The Lila palette has more shimmers, and I think Bad Habit really had a lot to work with here. As you can see from the picture and from the swatches, the colors are very close, and when it comes to the shimmers, as long as you use a glitter glue, they perform just as well. There is a huge difference between the Natasha Denona and the Bad Habit when it comes to the matte shades. I won't lie. The matte shades from Bad Habit, they take a little bit more effort to blend out, and they can look patchy, depending on what kind of brushes that you use. It's, it's not a palette that you can go sh 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 and be done with. You have to invest a little bit more time in your Bad Habit mattes. But the Bad Habit shimmers, they're phenomenal. 
they they rival the Natasha Denona ones. So since this one was more shimmers, I feel like that's why the Bad Habit palette worked so much better for me since their shimmer formula is so amazing. Overall, I believe that the Bad Habit version is a perfect dupe of this palette, but if you are going to pick it up, I will advise that their mattes take a little bit more blending and a little bit more time. Now, I would not recommend their dupe of the Sunset palette, and here's why. There's already a better dupe out there, and it's right here. The ColourPop Yes Please palette is a better dupe for the Sunset palette than the Bad Habit palette. Like I said before, Bad Habit really shines with their shimmer formula. This one has a lot more mattes. The Sunset palette has more mattes. It has more tones. It has more shades that are really similar but different in undertones and I don't think Bad Habit does a good job of distinguishing similar shades by undertone. In the Bad Habit palette, these three browns right here are kind of the same color, whereas in the Sunset palette, they're three very different colors, especially when you get them on the eye. With Bad Habit mattes, if they're similar colors and you put them on the eye, they end up looking like the same color. So I wouldn't recommend the Bad Habit palette that is duping the Sunset palette because I think the ColourPop Yes Please palette is just a better alternative. ColourPop does amazing mattes and their shimmers are amazing. Now, moving on to the Bad Habit palettes that I do have. Let's start with the one that I have on my eyes today, and that is the Athena palette. This is supposed to be a dupe for the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette. Today, I'm wearing quite a few shades on my eye. I have Purity, which is this light skin tone-ish shade for me all over the lid to set my primer. I am wearing a combination of Lore and Power, the orange and the red, in my transition and my crease. I put Daring, the pressed glitter, all over my lid. And then I deepened up the outer crease with Heroic, this deeper, this deeper like red brown. And then on the lower lash line, I just have Lore and Power like mixed together. So I've never owned the Desert Dusk palette, but now that I have this one, I don't feel the need to go out and get it. The mattes in this one are very powdery. They kick up a lot of powder. Let me grab a brush real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna boop, boop, boop. Okay, you get a lot of fallout. I barely tapped in and that's what it looks like. So the mattes in here do have a lot of fallout, but they're a lot better than the mattes in the Natasha Denona dupe palette. So I think Unfortunately, one of the downsides of Bad Habit is that they're not exactly consistent in their mattes. In their shimmers, they're consistent across the board. I love them all. So in this palette, they didn't exactly lay it out the same way they lay, or the, the Huda Beauty one is laid out. All the mattes are kind of in this corner right over here, and then all the shimmers are right here, and the pressed glitter is right here. I actually really enjoy the mattes from this palette. You have to be careful because it's Fallout City. So if you're using this one, always do your eyes first. But I really like them. They don't take as much effort to blend out as the other palettes. And I just, I really like the color selection here. All of these shimmers in here are fantastic. If I use a glitter glue with all of these. I would really recommend using a glitter glue. I use a glitter glue with all of my high-end palettes as well because I have hooded eyes. If I don't use glitter glue, the shadow's not staying no matter what. So I would use a glitter glue with all of these, especially the pressed glitter. That's why they made it a glue. But I've used this palette the most out of the rest of the Bad Habit palettes that I have, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I would highly, highly recommend this one. Out of all the palettes that I have here, this one takes the number one spot. I'm not a fan of the shades here on the end. Bad Habit doesn't make a good matte black shadow. Surprisingly, it's hard to find a good matte black shadow. You're not gonna find it here. You'll have to bring in either another single or a palette if you're looking for that. And this light lilac here on the end doesn't perform that well. It's fairly patchy. I'm not a fan. The rest of the palette is fantastic. Again, especially the shimmers. I find myself absolutely adoring Phenomenon, which is this light white shimmer, Ethereal, which is this beautiful a lilac shimmer, and Ecstasy. 
the screen. Like, just look at those. Oh, look at those. This is another palette that I have not bought the original version of, the Prism palette. But since I own this one, I don't feel I need to go out and get that one. Covering up these two shades on the end, this is an amazing palette. For some people, I'm not sure if you'll be able to get a whole look out of this palette since the colors are a little bit eccentric and you don't really get like any neutrals but i find myself liking that i have a large collection and i have plenty of neutral shadows and i think since you can find so many great neutrals especially at the drugstore that it wouldn't be an issue if you were to bring in anything from the outside if you're looking for an all-in-one everyday palette this one's not it but if you're looking to spend 12 to 14 dollars instead of 42 dollars go for this one i really recommend it Okay, so this is the last palette that I haven't owned the original of because the original was limited edition. This is the Bad Habit Artistry palette, and I have to say, the packaging on this one is phenomenal. Just, this is the package. It's beautiful matte black with this gold accent. Look at this palette. This is a dupe for the ABH Mario palette. Now, I've always always regretted the fact that i wasn't into makeup when this was available from abh but that's something that i really can't control i didn't really get into youtube into makeup until about a year ago and this wasn't available and i didn't have the money then anyway so this i think this is a fantastic idea if a product is truly limited edition which i believe if a company comes out with a product and states it's limited edition they should stick to that don't say it's limited edition, bring it back five, six times, and then make it permanent. Just tell the truth from the beginning. If it's going to be permanent, say that it's permanent. If it's going to be limited edition, truly, say it's limited edition. This is an amazing palette that people still talk about to this day. And I've always, you know, regretted that I missed out on it, but there's nothing I could do about it until Bad Habit gave me a feasible dupe. All of these shades are fantastic. Again, because most of them are shimmers. There's only one, two, three. There's only three mattes in here. So there's only three mattes in here and I can work with them. They are not Bad Habits best, but they're also not Bad Habits worst. But these shimmers are fantastic. They're not all like true true shimmers. Some of them are like shimmer satin finishes, but I adore this palette. I would also highly recommend this one. I got this one when it first released and I had some hush points. If we don't know what hush points are, if you log into the app every day and you just click a button, it's called your daily login bonus. If you click that, you get 10 points, which is 10 cents that you can use off your next order. Just do that once a day and you'll eventually build up enough points to get dollars off your order takes you 10 seconds and you could get 10 cents off the next order. I saved up right now, I have 500 points. I get $5 off my next order. I'm waiting for them to come out with a new palette. Like I'm really excited for them to come out with a new palette because they're already affordable. They're between 12 and $15 most of the time. But I, now I have $5 off and it's free shipping if you get it through the app. You guys see where I'm going here? I'm really liking Bad Habit. <laughs> and this really isn't sponsored. I wish it was sponsored, but it's not. It's not. Alrighty, we're on to the last two palettes. The first palette that I have here is the Midsummer Night palette. This is a dupe for the Too Faced Natural Love eyeshadow palette. I bought that eyeshadow palette when it came out last summer. I bought it, I was so excited to get it, I got it, I was incredibly disappointed. It, unfortunately, Too Faced is very hit and miss with their eyeshadows. And that palette, a lot of the colors look the same on the eye, a lot of them are very patchy. Overall, the palette was not up to Too Faced standards, and it cost way too much money, $62, for me to waste on a palette that was barely passable. I returned that palette about a month after I got it. I waited and bought it from Sephora so that I knew I could return it if I didn't like it. That is one thing I would suggest with new releases. I know it's very tempting to just run straight to their website, like the company's website, and buy it the day it comes out. 
but hold off. Buy it from Ulta, buy it from Sephora, or another retailer that has a good return policy. Because I heard there was like a whole scandal where people said that Too Faced would not accept their returns of the Too Faced Natural Love palette. I never want to be in that position. So moral of the story is think before you buy and buy from a place that has a good return policy. So I returned that palette. I was very disappointed in it. And when I saw the Midsummer Night palette on Shop Hush, I was very intrigued because overall I loved the aesthetic and I loved the colors. This is a neutral lover's paradise. If you have this palette, you really don't need an another neutral palette unless you buy like a mini all matte palette because the majority of these are shimmers. Again, I think Bad Habit shines through their shimmers. Take a shot every time I say that. I'm sure I've said it like 30 times already. The matte black in here is actually okay. You have to build it up. Don't think you're gonna do a full-blown smoky eye, but if you're trying to set your liner or just do a little bit of the outer corner, you're great. The mattes over here in this little corner are very, very powdery. Again, Fallout City. If you're going to use these, just be mindful. Do your eyes first. The shimmers all throughout the middle of the palette are gorgeous. They're beautiful. You can work them into the crease and they look fantastic. If you get a whole lot on your brush, and then tap off a lot of the excess. It doesn't look too, too glittery or shimmy, shimmy, or shimmery in your transition or your crease. So you can really get a lot out of this palette. The, the There is one shade I don't really like, and it's like this dark brown here. It's called Slumber. It's got like blue shimmer in it. Not a huge fan of that one. It's basically a matte that they threw shimmer in. Eh, it's okay. I'm not a huge fan of it, but only one shadow being a dud out of 30. I'll take those odds. <laughs> so I really recommend this palette, especially to people who are just now beginning to build a makeup collection or if you're looking for a really nice all-in-one work-appropriate palette, this one's for you. Again, Use a glitter glue with all the shimmers if you're using them on your lid, like packed on. If you're using your shimmers in the crease or the transition, you don't really need to use a glitter glue. But be mindful, I'll fall out. And the last palette that we have to go over is the Retro Love Palette, which of course is a dupe for the ABH Subculture Palette. The Subculture Palette is one of my absolute favorite pieces in my collection. I don't know what it is about these colors or about this layout that just calls to me. I love every single one of these colors like on the superficial level. I don't love the blendability of the majority of the darker shades. For me the lighter shades all work fantastic and I love them. Uh, Dawn, Red, or Dawn, New Wave, and Edge all work perfectly on me. I can pack them on, I can blend them out. Roxy is hit and miss for me sometimes. Not sure why. Uh, Axis, I really don't like. It's a dark blue, I can never get it to blend correctly. Rowdy, I can use if I don't pack too much on. You just gotta use a little, little, little bit. Mercury, I also don't really like. It's got really strange undertones to it that doesn't look right with the rest of the colors in here. But if I cover up these two, like this is my perfect palette right here. I love it. Especially love Destiny. Like, oh, I love olive greens. In comes Bad Habit with their Retro Love palette. Now I'm sure a million and one videos on this palette have already come out, but again, Bad Habit shines in their shimmers. Psychedelic, which is their dupe for Cube, is amazing. It's not going to be the same consistency or texture, but you get the same look out of it, but it's a look that I can actually build up. So when I wanna get that nice duochrome on my lid, I actually can, whereas with Cube, I've already hit hard pan on it. I've already hit hard pan on Cube and it's basically like no longer usable. The Bad Habit version, Psychedelic, I can still use that. It's a little bit powdery. Again, I would recommend doing your eyes first, but it's usable and I, I really enjoy Icon. I love so much better than Electric. 
electric in the ABH palette I have to build up and I have to use a concealer and a glitter glue just to like see it icon I can go boop 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 and it's there and revolution which is this beautiful copper shimmer I actually like the dupe of it in the ABH palette adore but I found myself reaching for this one more I think because I enjoyed these two shimmers better Again, I found myself avoiding the shade that's a dupe from Mercury in the ABH palette, which is called Pop in this palette. Again, it's got, they actually did a really good job because it's got almost the same undertone as the original palette. And I really don't find how it really fits in with the rest of the palette. Like, I kind of feel like you could just cover that up. And the rest of the palette makes sense. But with it there, it kind of just like, eh, but... But I digress. I think most people would have an easier time and would enjoy the mattes in the Bad Habit version more than the Subculture palette. The Subculture palette has a very steep learning curve and it was not marketed correctly. We're not going to get into all that drama, but you really only need to use a little bit of product and blend it out very carefully. It leaves a lot of room for error, honestly. The Bad Habit version is so much more user friendly and you get the same shades. Like this is the reason dupes were created was for the Retro Love palette and the Subculture palette, quite honestly, because you have a company that has a great idea. They have a great color scheme, but it's executed terribly and it's marketed horribly. So what do you do? You dupe it. So again, I would highly recommend this one. Honestly, I'd recommend this one over the ABH palette at this point because I get all the same looks, I get all the same inspiration from this palette as from the ABH and this one cost me $12. That's why we're all here. We want to save money. We love makeup and we want to save money. We can do both. So I know that was quite a long video. Thank you so much for staying. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon while you're down there so you get notifications whenever I post a new video. And I hope I'll see you in my next one. Bye.